2001, probably before a lot of you guys started playing Frisbee. Um, it's Akita, Japan, and it's the first time that Ultimate's been invited to be played at the World Games. So they had a lot of things they needed to work out to fit Ultimate into this arena. And the first thing that they changed about our game was they gave us, well, they gave us six teams or six different countries, and they gave us 10 players per team, and then they made it, games were timed. So even if you were beating a team by 30 points, you just kept playing. What year? 2001. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I was lucky enough to be selected for the team. On the flight there, our best player, Christine Dunlap, she's actually in the Hall of Fame, um, we don't know what happened to her, but her knee just blew up, like on the plane. She didn't twist it. She just, all of a sudden it was a cantaloupe. And she couldn't even walk on it. So we were already down one woman. And we had five men, well, four women now. And we were like, no problem, we're stacked, little adversity. Ben teaches us about working through adversity and we're okay. <laughs> um, so we get there and the first thing I notice is like, we get to the field site, and I grew up in the south, and, and I actually thrive in the heat. Like, my muscles feel nice and lubricated. But this heat was <laughs> ridiculous. And the second thing that I noticed about the field site was that we were playing on this packed dirt. I, I'd never seen packed dirt before. That was like... <laughs> it was like Beth. gravel, gravel pellets. So I had played tennis in the past, so you know, sliding was, I was accustomed to that, but this was different. I mean, there was a tuft of grass every here and there, but that was more like a hazard. You weren't, ex <laughs> you weren't expecting it. So we're playing and, and we're all fit, so we think, you know, we got this, but it's the first day and we're playing Sweden and I run, I make a cut and I catch the disc. And then this girl decides to make this late layout bid, and she basically just like laid out right where my knees were, and instead of kicking her in the head, <coughs> um, <laughs> I tried to dive over her, and I, I did dive over her, and I landed on my right shoulder, and I like felt it hit the hard packed ground, and then I could move everything except that shoulder because I was in so much pain, and they ended up taking me to this Japanese hospital, and they took some x-rays, and then I had all these... Japanese doctor standing around me because if you're in the World Games, you're like a VIP at this point. So I was like, all right. And they're like standing around me and they're pointing at the x-ray and they said, broken scapula. And I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Nothing's broken. Just give me some pain medicine and get me back to the field because I can just see my team. The girls are playing savage. It's hot. And I feel horrible uh, that, that they're out there. So then they give me this like brown paper bag filled with leaves, <laughs> and <laughs> and a, of and course, a, and, yeah, of course. and a, I should have tried it actually, but um, and a sling, and they sent me back to the fields. And so I just basically for the rest of the week I overdosed on ibuprofen. I had the trainer tape my collarbone down into place and tape my arm to the rest of my body. And I would go out just like a point or two, or you know, a couple points a game, just so that my teammates could get a rest because they were playing savage in this awfulness. And we actually made it to the finals, and we're playing Canada in the finals. Uh, but we're all beat up at this point. Um, our guys are like completely taped up. They're playing on pulled hamstrings and career-ending knee injuries. And um, it's, I think we were down one. My memory kind of fades at this <laughs> point in my career, but. I think we were down one, and um, the time is running out. We have possession of the disc, and one of the best handlers in the game, and I think, I think it was Steve Dugan, he hucks a disc to one of our other guys, and I'm talking like six foot three, four, five guys, and it floats. And it floats long enough that four guys get under it, and they're all jockeying for position. And then there I am. Somehow I get back there <laughs> with like my arm, and I'm like <laughs> gonna, 
I'm going to do something. I don't know what it is. I'm going to catch the trash. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to catch the trash. And so I see them all like jockeying and everything starts to slow down. <laughs> and the disc comes and they're in the position where, you know, wherever they jump, that's where the, the frisbee's coming. And I'm in the position where whatever tips off their fingers, I'm going to get. And they all jump and the frisbee floats and comes just millimeters above their fingers. And it basically hits me in the chest. <laughs> and so I use that good hand of mine and I clap it to my chest. And then I use my other hand, which is down here, and I basically like Buddha, <laughs> I Buddha belly bounce pass it to the guy who's making the cut for me, like a foot away, and he throws it for the score. And I don't know what, you know, that was like the most excited I think I've ever been for one point in my entire life. I don't know if it was like endorphins or dehydration or what, but I ibuprofen. Just, yeah, ibuprofen. <laughs> I started to run around the field with my one arm as fast as I could, and I was yelling. So not only was I <laughs> drawing attention to myself, probably, but I probably, I probably looked like a chicken with like one arm. <laughs> and um, I felt myself running and kind of leaning forward a little bit too much. <laughs> and at some point, I was leaning forward so much that I knew it was going to happen and I just face planted <laughs> in the middle of the field, in the, in the dust, <laughs> in my black uniform. And I mean, I popped up so fast because I was like, oh shit. Are there people uh, watching? <laughs> yeah, there was like the most fans I think I've ever seen. There's <laughs> thousands of people. Not only that, um, the Olympic committee was there like oh. evaluating. <laughs> Evaluating our sport, uh, I dust myself off and I like sheepishly walk over to the sideline, and I am embarrassed. <laughs> but then after the games, the this very distinguished-looking Japanese guy in a suit, um, who I later found out was the head of Japan Ultimate, uh, came over to me and he took my hand and he shook it and he said something along the lines of, um, like you play with such spirit and such heart and you celebrate by diving on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> I know. After that, like a few other people who I didn't know, like the, some German players came up and said kind of the similar thing and I realized that everyone thought I did it on purpose. <laughs> Thanks, Don, that was great. So Ben, same question. What was one of your more embarrassing moments from an ultimate experience? I've never had an embarrassing moment. <laughs> uh, I, was, I was misquoted though once. Uh, we did a, a clinic for players in, it was a misquote. Uh, we did a clinic for players in Prague at the World Championships and we said, anyone that wants to come learn to throw a Frisbee, we will be there at this day, the day before World, to come out and visit us. And, we walked our whole team and maybe like 40 people from all these different countries up this hill and, and to this field and we got to the field and, and somebody like tending a goat said, this is the wrong field, go to the next one. And we turned the corner, there's 400 more people easily. Ends up being this huge gathering of people that want to go through all these drills with us and, and we were showing a lot of catching drills and I'm very proud of this. Uh, I actually had three different seasons of playing where I didn't drop a disc in a game. Which is kind of cool, right? Like you can clap. <laughs> I'm gonna stop you here. I was there for this, so I'm gonna fact check your story as you tell it. I will. I'm gonna go ahead. Okay. In, in case you're wondering, the secret is in at least one of those seasons, don't get played at all. No PG. Uh, and I said something like, you know, to back up what we're saying about this catching stuff. Like I said this thing, like. In three seasons, I never had a drop in a game. And I don't know if that translated for everybody. Uh, they all spoke English. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
So at the end of the week, we played a showcase game in the quarterfinals against a very good Boston team, and the stands were full. And it, if you ever saw it, there was a catch on ESPN. There was this game, and huge crowd. Um, four points into that game, I dropped a disc. Uh, one of those ones that just kind of like slithers down your leg. Uh, and, uh, and the announcer, and fact check me, and the announcer said, oh, that's his first drop in four years. <laughs> that part is true. <laughs> uh, just so you know, in, in case you're not following along with the story, that's not what you want the announcer to say. <laughs> Similarly, this was a, a packed stadium. Everyone there heard it, and everyone went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Like they were watching me molecularly decompose. That is my embarrassing story. <laughs> Thank you, Ben.